All right, next stop, Brooks Family Farm. Located right here in Central West Uxbridge, Ontario, Ashworth Road. It's strawberry season. Craig is inside. We're gonna go see if he's in there. I'm sure he's working hard away and keeping up with the hustle and bustle of this amazing place. So let's come on in. And there he is. Hey, Craig. Andrew. Raising hand, hands full. Nice to see you. You picked a great weekend to come up and see us. You're just in time for all of our strawberries. We're just getting into the best part of our season. They look amazing. They are, they're absolutely great. We got 22 acres of strawberries this season to get going. The fields are on and perfect right now. Uh, hoping just after July weekend, we're gonna get into all of our raspberries. We got gooseberries coming on right now. And our Saskatoons are almost on. Red, black currants, you pick perfect time to come and visit us. All right, I'm ready to do this. Get in the fields and... Get your hands in the dirt, pick some strawberries. I'm ready. All right. Let's do it. Let's go. First things first, this is a, a family farm, yep. Brooks. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about them. So years ago, uh, this was all taken over. So Alvin and Brenda Brooks, they were, they were growing crops, they had animals. Um, and then 1990, they switched it over to uh, pick your own for strawberries and raspberries as they were uh, looking to get their kids through school. They needed to get a little bit more income coming in. And in 1994, Paul joined in and started to become a farming full time. So as Paul came into the business, that's where everything really, the dynamics and everything really changed. So that's where the playground came right in. The pick your own went from that small little patch to our 22 acres that we have today. Just the strawberries. Just the strawberries. Plus we have all the raspberries, the currants, the sour cherries, Saskatoons, gooseberries. Uh, raspberries, we have red, black, purple, gold. Um, there's all sorts of uh, options out there. A little, a little something for everybody. And then with the playground, every year there's something else added, right? I mean, you went from our train ride, which was a massive hit, and then the zip lines go in, jumping pillows go in, there's a fire truck, there's a pirate jumping ship. Jumping pillows. Oh, fun, you gotta try the jumping pillows. Um, you know, and then it, every year something got added for festivals. So the big one to start off with was Fall Festival. And that's where we had pig races and pumpkin cannon shows, all sorts of craziness. And then we went and there was, uh, the Easter Fest was added. And the kids all got to come up and you know do their Easter egg hunt and do and meet the Easter Bunny. And then now there's you have Maple Fest going on. We have our um, uh, Brooks Farms After Dark. We're gonna have like flamethrowers and all sorts of crazy stuff this year. And then we'll finish it off with our Festival of Lights, where the kids will get to see Anna and Elsa, the Grinch. You'll have Santa. There's marshmallows. There's live music. There's hot chocolate. Like you just can't beat it. It's pretty awesome. This doesn't sound like no ordinary farm. No, so like it went from, you know, it was just, you know, you got going with your pick your own and bringing some people in and, and going and, and now it is 12 months a year, 12 hours a day, just going from, you know, as soon as you get here till you go home. We got another new building going up where we're gonna do our education programs out of. We're wow. hoping to get to where we get um, our, our field of fork programs where people will come in, they'll see where we pick and harvest everything. Our chef will then take them in and give them a cooking class. We're gonna do both children and adults. Uh, so lots of stuff coming in the, coming down the pipe. Lots of stuff coming down the pipe. It's, uh, yeah, it's entertainment, it's it's farm, it's cultural, it's... Multi, multi-purpose, right? Um, yeah. Diversify, so you go from your pick your own to your playground to your festivals. Lots of things going on, you know, and it starts all in the spring when we make our own maple syrup. Right on. Yeah. So just as important, tell us about yourself. Who are you, what's, what's your background, why are you here? So I was with Zares for 28 years, uh, always in produce. Started off as just that produce clerk, uh, bag and head lettuce, cut and romaine, and went from there and became a manager over in Alliston. Uh, from Alliston, I went to Keswick for, I think I was there for 10 years. Um, and then opportunity came up to come into the business here. So now I manage the, the whole business for, uh, for Brooks Farms. Nice. So here, obviously, the market was where I came in and we've adapted and changed and where we brought in all these different products to go from more of, uh, of, of our maple muffins, which is something you got to try later on, 
all of our pies, which is all fantastic, and our, and our homemade fudge, you can't beat that. And then we started reaching out and trying to find more local vendors and bringing them in. Like we talked about State's Honey that we're gonna try in a little bit as well. So lots of lots of new new interesting things that we brought into the market here. And we were high school buddies too. I was just straight say, A yeah. student. Yeah. Oh, 100%. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was gonna say, like, we were talking earlier about how we all got connected with uh, Neil, Grattan's Greatest, where we do all of the mustards and stuff with him. and. And then he's doing all of your mustards for Serafino as well. So when he brought your name up, it was just a, a win-win. Let's give it a shot. And things have gone pretty well in here for us. I hope you guys feel the same way. So what, why are we here? Why is Serafino here? You just... Well, we thought we would give you a shot. Here. You know, it's, it's, it's knowing good people and bringing in good products. So if the products came in and there was no taste and there was no flavor and they didn't look good, then obviously it wasn't going to be a win. But when you bring the stuff in and we start trying it, I mean, the mustards, when it comes to the sausages, are a no-brainer. We talk about the olive oils and all of the dips. I mean, that's a no-winner. When you get into talking about spaghetti sauces and putting that stuff in, it's absolutely fantastic. And then for my wife, now she's getting into all of these guys here, right? A little bit of that into your uh, your tonic water or something like that, and just give you a little flavor is absolutely unbelievable. Soda syrups, yeah. So again, you know, it's, when it's good product and it tastes great, it's a win, and that's what people are looking for. Do you have a specific Serafino product? So for me, I actually got to go back to the apple mustard. So the apple mustard on our apple sausages are unbelievable. Um, but I mean, again, everybody, the, the nice thing is there's a little something different for everybody, right? There's lots of options for people to check out. But that there has got to be my favorite one right there. All right. Of course, it's a... Uh a Grattan's greatest product. Well, yeah, I mean, then it goes along with uh, with our apple orchard, right? When people come pick your own for apples in the fall, got to right. have a little apple mustard. Awesome. So should we get you a basket and load you up? <laughs> That's what I'm here for. All right, let's do this. All right. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, like I said, here we have lots these of options. Good. So I mean, if you're into mushrooms, the best thing about these guys, you can take this home and you grow everything yourself, constantly pick them all off and they regrow back, right? So you gotta try one of those guys. Lion's mane for your brain. Yeah, and then, so we're talking about states. These guys are great. Like they're literally a two minute drive right down the road. All that we have- They're up the road, of, literally this run. Yeah, two minutes up the road. He, he drives down his Kubota when he delivers everything and drops it <laughs> off, it's absolutely awesome. Um, but yeah, you can't be having the local honey, right? Like, you know, another good, good vendor to work with. Wildflower. You know, a little Local bit- Local honey is It is, best. a little bit in it's your medicine. tea. Whatever you want, right? It's great for cooking with as well. It's fantastic. And then, you know, we've got lots of options from our salad dressings, our coffees, our tea blends, all sorts of stuff in here. Now, if you really like coffee, as I'm sure you do, gotta get you into, actually one of our better ones is our Kraken. So right now as well, now you can't leave here either without having some of our asparagus, right? So our guys are picking fresh asparagus daily out in the fields, right? So you gotta try some asparagus, a little bit of your olive oil, a little salt, a little pepper right on the grill. Absolutely fantastic. That's exactly what I do with this. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And as we're going, anyways, even thinking, the rube, strawberry rhubarb jam. Right, Brenda's original recipe from when she started making all this, we still make it the same way now. Obviously still with our rhubarb. And your strawberry. Now you gotta have some of that as well. What's going on over here? Any? So, I mean, lots of options, right? Whether you're looking for a little, uh, a little trinket to take home, a souvenir to go home with. Um, as we go through all of your mugs, whether you're looking for something for your teacher at the end of the year, you want a candle, all sorts of options over here are signs, the cottage signs, the home signs. Oh, nice. You need a little stuffy to curl up with that night. You can't beat that, <laughs> right? Sometimes the kids just have to have a little stuffy, right? But yeah, lots of options here. So this originally used to be a spot that we were all that was a seating area for customers who would come in, everybody would eat in here. When COVID, that changed, and we weren't allowed to have the indoor dining anymore. So as we were talking, what was the best way to utilize this? Kelly uh, and I were talking and we said, you know what? She came in one day and she just filled it up with all the giftware and it's never going. Like it's just been absolutely a win for us. It's been fantastic. All right. And then you can't beat on a hot day, picking strawberries, coming in for a little ice cream. Right, Quarth ice cream, you can't beat that. 
cookies and cream, birthday cake, you got your mint ch uh, chip, you got your moose tracks, and of course you gotta have strawberry. your strawberry. Right, you can't beat the strawberry ice cream. Might have to grab one of those before I go. Absolutely. And then, you know, another one that we deal with is uh, when we start looking at Sheldon Creek. So Sheldon Creek is where we get all of our, our cheese from. So the cheese curds are unbelievable, our yogurts. Sheldon Creek has a, a, a multitude of variety of milks, uh, dairy products that we use, right? That's all they have. Now you can't beat the maple muffins. So when they bake these, our actual maple syrup that we make at the forest actually goes into each one of these suckers. So those wow. you gotta try exactly what I need. Absolutely. <laughs> Those are heavy. Oh, but they're so good. So Let's good. do it. Let's do it. Pasca. So an excellent jamming berry. So Brenda's best, right? So again, this is one of Brenda's original recipes that we still do to this day. People try this stuff and they come back every year just for the Haskap jam because it's so good. So you got to try one of those guys. So again, this guy, these guys are tapped and completely boiled down and bottled right here on the farm. It's a whole process nice. that hopefully will come back in the spring next year and we'll show you how we do everything. I'm always into maple syrup from different places. It's like, uh, it's kind of like wine or olive oil. You'll actually taste a- 100%, you can taste it in the trees, right? 100%, and then it all depends on your process of actually boiling it down. It's pretty cool, but yeah, we'll, show, we'll do that in the spring uh, when you come back. But yeah, lots of options, right? So we have all of our pea bacon, um, we have the pork chops, we got a variety of steaks in here. Um, pretty much your one-shop stop if you're looking to come and just have, pick out a little treat to go home with. So you got, you can't go without trying some of our homemade strawberry fudge. So again, Don Raiden House upstairs. So we're making these guys every couple of weeks. Absolutely unbelievable, right? So. Strawberry shortcake. There you go. It's exactly what my belly needs. <laughs> <laughs> so again, so love this guy. yeah, this is the guy that actually brought us together here and, and got uh, got us all kind of connected. So a little history with Neil. So he actually was a full-time mechanic and then he was doing all of his mustards and stuff on the side and we were all his guinea pigs. So every time he had a new flavor combination, he would try them on us and we would all give him feedback on what he liked. And then over the years, he's obviously built everything all up. Um, but it, when you talk about these guys, I mean, I know you have your own line, but I mean, the maple with all of our maple syrup in it, you can't beat some of this stuff. It's unbelievable. Nice. But so you got a loaded basket. Let's get you to the oh. cache, get you wrung out, and then we'll get you into the field, start picking some berries. Let's do it. Sound good? There's lots of berries this year. Lots of berries right now. It's like one of the bigger farms around. So four strawberries around here, they're were worth two, three times bigger than everybody else for anybody that's close to us right now. Um, you know, we got a couple other berry patches that are, you know, two acres, three acres, another one's five acres. We're at 22. Strictly so, strawberry. Of strawberries. This is just all strawberries, right? Um, and then obviously, like I said, we get into all of our our raspberries and currants and everything else. Um, the currants and sour cherries are all on the other side, the has caps. Saskatoons are in those bushes, those big tall bushes straight across there. So there are over a hundred different variety of strawberries that you can actually buy. So ours actually just came from, um, the ones that we have just came from Nova Scotia. So really? we had them, they actually are planted on the other side. So those are day neutrals, right? So they only last that one year. At the end of the year, that crop will get tilled and then you'll have to plant them in a new spot next year. These guys here, they get planted. The very first year they get planted, our guys will come out and they'll actually pick a lot of the flowers off of the actual plant because you want to encourage all that energy to go into the roots to, to, to get a better hold in the ground. And in the second year, that's when you're gonna come out and start picking all these berries. So typically you're gonna get five years a pick off of the plants. Now on the far side over there, on the west side, we're actually on our seventh year of picking those plants, which is remarkable. When we talk about raspberries, there's red, there's black, there's purple, there's gold. There's a multitude of varieties that we have here. Um, we have black currants, we have red currants. Um, uh, the only berry we do not have here is a blueberry. So another, another little fun fact, I guess, with strawberries that people don't realize, in Canada here, uh, we have a lot, in Ontario to be more specific, we have a lot of clay in our soil. So that clay in our soil actually helps sweeten up a lot of our food here. 
So that's where we get, if you get a strawberry that comes up from California, those strawberries, they can be here within two or three days of being picked and, and brought up. So it's not like they've been sitting there rotting. They're still a good berry, but it's grown in a different soil than what we have here. So our soil with the clay helps sweeten our berries. And we also, because we have a different variety of plant, we have a different strawberry up here as well. I can only eat Ontario straw. Like if I'm in Ontario, I'm only eating Ontario strawberries. Oh, 100%. I, like California, nothing against California, but they're just... I don't know, it's a big ball of cardboard. Yes, they, there, there's no there's no flavor to them. Um, it's unbelievable. Like, even when you look at the berries, like, these guys haven't even fully come on yet, but, I mean, they're absolutely gorgeous, right? I got to get one. I'll pay for this one later. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, hmm. So yeah, we have pick your own going on right now. Um, Father's Day coming up, we'll have a mo like well, people will come from all over the GTA to come and pick here, right? Which is pretty awesome. Well, you know where the best berries are at. So well, let's go for a walk. <laughs> so pick your row, and when we get in there, you'll be able to find berries wherever you want to go. The big thing that the mistake people make is they just they look, they don't see any red. All you got to do, get in. Open it up and you'll find some of the juiciest berries. All right. So again, when you're picking your berries, you want to make sure oh, yeah, that you're just pulling tips. them off and they're going to just pop right off. You don't want to squeeze the berry. When you pick, you don't want to have any juice left on your fingers at all. If you've got juice on your fingers, like what you have, you squeeze too hard, you're, you're oh, wrecking it's... your berry. The one I popped into my mouth. So they should just, a little tug and it should just come right off. Oh yeah. That's a nice one. So what, we've been doing this for two minutes. We've already almost got half a basket here, right? Like there's tons of berries. Yeah, I got half a basket in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All respect in the world for, uh, for our guys that come out here and pick for us on a regular basis. Yeah, it's certainly a labor of love. Do the bigger berries different than the smaller ones? Or they're all yeah, just they're all gonna have a little bit of a different taste. The bigger you get, right? Yeah, Take a look at his fingers. How juicy are they? <laughs> they're pretty good. They're pretty good. These guys will produce. Um, they will stop. So what I mean that we'll have berries all year, all the strawberry plants will we'll go through those cycles, right? Like we'll have, this is all going to come on when these fields are done. We'll have other plants that will come on and we'll continue to go that way. We have other strawberry plants on the other side of the farm that are planted just for this year. And they will plant once we, uh, you know, halfway into summer and they will continue to produce until we get right into that first frost. Like the store-bought ones usually have, they're all white inside, and yeah, these are all like. Mamma mia. Like, you can't beat it. Oh, they're juicy, they're sweet, they're yeah. slightly firm, they're. Yep, the you can't... season's just coming on, right? So that's where a lot of people are coming, they're picking to make all their own strawberry jam. We obviously make all of our own strawberry jam in the market as well. We've been using uh, Brenda's uh, recipe. And she's one of the original owners. So like her, our half cap berries, we use her recipe. Every time we make that jam, we put her actual picture back on the label, Brenda's Best. Oh yeah? Yeah, and then we do uh, all of our strawberry jam. Brenda's Berry Jam. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, cheers. Right For me? Here. Double fisted, all right, look at that. Come get some strawberries. These are the real deal. I actually brought a little treat out to uh, try a strawberry with. Oh, what'd you do, what'd you bring in? <laughs> if 
you're at home, you'd like cut a little top it out of it. Yeah. And I pour some vintage balsamic vinegar on top. Awesome. Cheers. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's what you do with strawberries in Modena. That's pretty cool. That's delicious. That's really good. I mean, these are good on their own, but this just punches it up a little bit. Oh, heck yeah. I'll carry that for you. One more for the road. Full. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. All right. Well, thanks again for coming. I hope you uh, enjoyed yourself while you're here. Don't forget your strawberries. Oh, right. And for your uh, grateful time and really That's appreciate fantastic. it. You know I'm, what to do with that, right? I'm going to head back out to the strawberry fields and uh, have myself a little lunch. <laughs> awesome. There you go. Thank you. All, All right, right, buddy. Have a good day. Hands are full. Thanks so much. Check it out. Brooks Farms. Don't waste any time. See you, Craig. Thanks, guys. See you later.